hand carved. Ah! Ah! Okay, a little trip wire. That is the strongest uh, spider web I have ever felt. I don't know if y'all can see it. Wow. We got this really cool tree right here. Just a roadside cemetery. We'll look into some of the names. We are feeling like this is an African American church over here. A M E, African Methodist Episcopal. This was the first organized black church in the United States of America. It was founded by a man named Richard Allen who was born February 14th in Delaware, presumably, as records are sketchy, into slavery in 1760. It is said that he was sold to Benjamin Chu or was born on Benjamin Chu's Delaware farm. His whole family was sold to another plantation owner. And then later, his mother and siblings were sold, and he never saw them again. At the age of 17, Richard Allen heard a minister preach against slavery. He was so moved by the Holy Spirit that he converted and went on to start the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Richard Allen purchased his own freedom for the cost of $2,000. He went on to travel and preach, saving up his money, doing odd jobs. In 1787, he returned to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to preach at St. George's Church, considered the mother of American Methodism. Blacks worshiped separately from whites. On one Sunday morning, the whites entered the church as the black parishioners were still in prayer. They were asked to move on, but Richard Allen politely asked to please let us finish our prayers. When that was refused, he marched his parishioners out. In 1802, Richard met Sarah Bass. They later married. Together they saved up their money and purchased land in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for the cost of $35 a difficult task for freed slaves at this time. They opened a blacksmith shop, which doubled as a church on Sunday mornings. Later, it became Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, which still stands today. Richard and Sarah are interred in a crypt in the basement of the church, which doubles as a museum. A little building out here with it too. We start in this far corner, I guess. Let's see what kind of names we find out here. Assuming this is the graveyard to the church. kind of names and dates we can collect. We're still in the Noonan area. Pretty sure this is still considered Noonan, south of Atlanta. We just left the location of an active Stranger Things filming. Looks like they're filming tonight. I thought that that season, is that season four? I thought that that had wrapped, but uh, clearly they've come back to do something. Had um, like a safety helmet. Maybe he was a lineman. John Alvin McKeever Jr. 1952 to 2017. 
At the age of 12, he was one of the first students to integrate the elementary school in Madras, Georgia. There is Senior. Died in 2010, military. This one was buried in 1929. So not super de duper old, but still old indeed. Mrs. Josie Bell Sanford. That was funny. Wanted to know if I was doing the find a grave, but we're just filming with a YouTube channel. Maybe he was somebody on the Strangers Things set and he's gonna come back and talk to me. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? Any in the woods here? Toppled over here. Some, oh, there's some stones over here. Now, we just heard from a local that sometimes the graves that are in the woods off of the regular sites are um, for the African-American population of that church. But this is definitely sunken in right here. I'm not sure if that comes across on television. There's some stones and there are some spots that are sunken in. Oh my, these are children, I believe. Eighteen eighty five to eighteen eighty five, I think. Get close and I'll check later when we're in editing phase. Sometimes we can't quite tell what we're seeing until we go home and edit and get some details. Uh, we are in somewhere in Noonan. Little Latrina Thurman. Wow, this almost looks as if someone just buried someone there on their own. But who knows? I have heard recently that it is completely legal here in Coweta County to bury your cremated loved one's remains in the backyard. I'm not sure about a full body. Someone has left some trinkets on this grave. Lots of old, people aren't really taking the old flowers off. They're just putting on more, but their choice. Must have been a bus driver. Sherman, P O Y T H R E S S. Husband and father, must have been a bus driver. Here's one that says mother, Larnett Anthony. Sleep on, Mother, we love you, but God loves you best. Here's a small stone. I 
are broken up. Oh, this looks like that one we saw over there. Mrs. Carrie Douglas, August 7th, 1954. Oh, look at this one. Whoop. And that one's indented there. Probably something there. Look at this stone under this tree. Wow, that's pretty cool. <sighs> Blake Funeral Home, Reverend Jerome Alton Graham, 1963. That's cool under the tree like that. Just leaning there. More indentions and random stones. This might be a place where people were simply burying their loved ones on their own in some cases. Somebody's left a piece of white quartz here. Wilma B. Johnson, mother, 1930 to 1966. Oh, a Bonner. We, we found the Bonner story very interesting. Go back to our season two playlist and check out Stealth Cemetery. It's a cool episode and it talks about Daisy Bonner. Check it out. Talked about the Bonner family before in Georgia. Herbert Bonner, 1945 to 1991, served in Vietnam. old lamp or an old urn? A lamp, I guess. Oh, yeah. It's right on the edge of some pretty gnarly woods here. These are sort of more Bonners. These are sort of caved in a little bit together. Mother Artie Stiegel Bonner, 1905-1962. Father I. Walker Bonner. Okay, I'll be right there. going in and out of some indentions and there's big pieces of white quartz out here. Big pieces of quartz. There's more stones in here. So there are likely some graves that have not been kept up. That's styrofoam. I thought it was quartz for a minute, just styrofoam. But it is an, oh, another indention. We are just going through the indentions recently. Oh, this one was interred just two years ago. Research showed some interesting facts about Teresa being an athlete when she was younger, holding a record at nearby Noonan High School until 2010 in shot put. Hopefully near her family. All right, well, this was kind of cool. We got distracted because we tried to go by an old church. Um, we got there, it was all marked off because the TV show, the Netflix phenomenon, Stranger Things, looks like they're set to start filming there tonight. Um, so I'll be watching for friends of mine who are background and so forth. Uh, Oh, that's neat. A little blocked in area there. Walled space. Huh. No telling. Interred in 45, 49, 45, 40s, 1940s.
this one has been done with a pencil or a stick. Tom Vinson, born 1876, died 1958. Most Faithful Servant, 1922. This is an older one. 1848, born 4850, 72, Alonzo Frazier. Okay, that's an older stone. See if we get to a name here. M A Glass, December 1881 to June 3rd, 1912. Yep, this is a little bit older one. Dust them off, maybe they're resting in peace. Lots of dips in this little graveyard. A lot of dips in the dirt, not marked. Here is a substantial one here. Another one of these stones. I don't know if this is a certain Frank's Cemetery, local banks. Not sure. Mrs. Otis Long. These look like cemetery markers. And we're going to hit the road. We'll do some research on this cool one. We've got this little building. Kind of a neat place. Willie Mitchell, 90, 1931 to 1973. Okay, we're gonna hit the road. The GoPro is getting super hot. Just wanted to bring you out to this little cemetery, graveyard, excuse me, because it is indeed attached to this old church. This little roadside graveyard certainly revealed a fascinating African-American history. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, let's roll. Sorry we couldn't take you to the other church. We will get back there. It's an older one. Cool. Let's head home.